أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا ونبينا حبيب إله رب العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله التيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المظلومين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Greetings and felicitations in this month of Shaban and greetings and felicitations upon the birth of our Imams in this beginning of the month uh, that we had. Indeed, a month of Shaban, a great opportunity for all of us to really connect to God. And one must utilize the means and methodologies provided by Ahlul Bayt Ali Musalam, who were the greatest connectors, who themselves were connected all the time to God. In our previous program, we paid attention to or we shed some, some light upon the beginning phrases of the Munajat Shabaniya. We talked a little bit about dua and the importance of dua. We pointed out to the importance of salawat, in which we said that Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad wa asma dua ida dautuk. Now, this reason of the salawat, we mentioned that. And we said that the creation have been created out of the nure Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. So therefore, when a person is sending his salutations and blessings upon Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad, eventually these salutations and blessings of God, which goes on Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad, transfers to us, to the creation itself. And on the other hand, we find in the traditions that a dua which have the name and salutations of Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad in the beginning is not rejected, is accepted by God because Prophet Muhammad was the beloved of God. Prophet Muhammad was the one who provide, who was mercy to mankind. So when you are taking his name, it is as if you are invoking that special mercy of God to mankind. Now, what I'm going to do is very quickly go through uh, this munajat because it is a masterpiece. It is one of the key uh, towards understanding oneself, nafs, and also understanding God and also the path towards God, the way and how one should really approach God, in what way one should really connect to God. The dua begins with salutations, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. And then after that it says, Wasma du'ai idha da'utuk, which means that, O oh Allah, I call on you and you listen to my call, da'utuk. Like as we said in the month of Shaban, there are no formalities between the lover and the beloved. All of those things which we tend to see in the du'as such as praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, praising the Lord in order to really um, uh, attract his him and in order to really attract his mercy um, we don't see that in uh, the month of Shaban or in the month of Rajab we directly enter to the realm of God uh, to the nearness of God for example we clearly say Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa asma dua ida dautuk this actually points out to the blessing this actually points out to the level of human being uh, uh, that are in the month of Shaban, due to the month of Shaban, being raised closer to God. This points out to the special mercies that are there in this month of Shaban, as we said in the month of uh, Rajab wa Rahmatuk al -wasia, you know, and also in this month of Shaban, in the Salwat al-Shabaniya, these special mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is clearly indicated. Wasma du'a da Oh Allah, listen to my call when I call to, on to you. Wasma is one, sam, which means hearing, is one of the qualities of God. God is known as sami. So when you are within yourself saying wasma du'a'i, you are trying to attract the name of sami towards yourself. You are not attracting the name of Ghafoor towards yourself. 
you're not trying to attract the name of uh, 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 Alim towards yourself or the name of Hakim towards yourself. Particularly, you are trying to attract, you are trying to you know, uh, bring out the manifestation of the name of Sami towards yourself. You're focusing on that name of Sami. Although this name of Sami is no different from the name of Rahman or from the name of Rahim, you know, or from the name of, Ghaf name of Ghafoor. Although this quality of Sami is no different because Allah's qualities and all of his names, you know, within itself have qualities. But for us to really understand, to really know God, we say he's Sami. He is Sami at the same time. You know, he is Ghafoor. He is Ghafoor at the same time. He is Qahar. He is Qahar at the same time. He is Rahim. He is Rahim at the same time. He is Alim. He is Alim at the same time. He is Hakim. He is Hakim at the same time. He is Musawwir. You know, Muhammad, Al Aziz, Al Ghaffar, Al Jabbar, Al Mutakabbar, Al Khaliq, Al Jalal, Al Ikramu, Ya Hayyu, or Ya Qayyum, all of the names. But in this particular dua, you are trying to attract that particular name of Sami of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, wasma dua'i ida da'utuk. You are focusing on this name. So, like as we said, du'as are mouthpiece of Tawheed. Through du'as, we understand who God is. Ma'arif Tawheedi are within the du'as. So, when we recite the du'a, Make sure that you understand, make sure that you increase the ma'rifat of Tawheed. It's very important. Our life and our journey is a journey of Tawheed. Our journey towards God is educating ourselves, is understanding, is having the ma'rifat of Tawheed. The Ahlul Bayt alayhimu salam came here to introduce Tawheed. The Ahlul Bayt salam came here to teach us about Tawheed. They sacrificed their life for this oneness of God. Imam Hussein's sacrifice was for that. If one pays attention to the Dua'i Arafah of Imam Hussein salam, one would come to the understanding what Tawheed is. So therefore, now, when I'm saying wasma dua'i da da'u tuk, this means that our Lord, our God is Sami. He is listening. So we are saying, oh God, I call on to you. You listen to my call. There's another thing. Samat, listening to of God is not the same as listening of ours. When we listen to something, we might not react. We might not respond. We might not understand. We might not be aware. We might fall short in, 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 in understanding. You know, we might misunderstand. But the listening of God is very different. The listening of God is with understanding, is with knowing. You know, as we recited in the, in the, in the month of Rajab. Because, see, the month of Rajab kind of, introduce us to these qualities in the month of Shaban these qualities are reintroduced these things are re-emphasized on us so that when we enter the month of Ramadan we have a good thorough understanding of God as we recite Allahumma inni as'aluka right in the month of Rajab we recite this right that uh, that was uh, لِكُلِّ مَسْأَلَةٍ مِنْكَ سَمْءٌ حَاذِرٌ وَجَوَابٌ عَتِيدٌ لِكُلِّ مَسْأَلَةٍ مِنْكَ سَمْءٌ حَاذِرٌ Wallah, you are someone who for every masala, for every issue, some, your listening power, your listening is hadir, is presence. لِكُلِّ مَسْأَلَةٍ مِنْكَ سَمْءٌ حَاذِرٌ وَجَوَابٌ عَتِيدٌ and your response to it is very swift and very quick and you do that, right? وَيَعَلَمُ الذَّمِيرَ السَّامِتِ And you even know the dhamir, 
the intention and what is required of, of people. So, le kulli mas'alatin min kasamun hadir and also wasma du'ai idha da'u tuk is pointing out to that God's listening is something that is always there, number one, and his listening is with response. There will be a response of our question. God will reply to us. That's why we raise our hand, we say, Wasma Dwaida Dautuk. Right? So through this we are understanding the Sifat Islam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how number one. And number two, we are also coming now in one see there are two things happening here. One is we are understanding the Sifat Islam of God, the Samaat, the listening of God. And the other thing is our lowliness. Dua, that call. So there is dua and sum. In this one jumla, there are two things. One is the dua and sum. So now dua is ours. Now as we know that we have, you know, our Lord is some, someone who is lesami or dua. You know, Hazrat Ibrahim, right? He says, my dua is someone who is... Inna Ibrahim la halimun awwa'un munib. You know, Hazrat Ibrahim was someone who, you know, used to return to God, who used to awwa, yeah, who used to, uh, who was very soft hearted, who would ask, who would call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. Hazrat Musa says that even the salt that I put in my soup, I ask from you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Call is always there from the Abd. Call is always there from the Abd. And the response and the Samaat, لِكُلِّ مَسْأَلَةٍ مِنْ كَسَّمُونْ hazir, And the sum is huzur, is present, always there from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you have the quality of some of God and you have the quality from our side of dua. Qul ma say ma Allah will not ya'abaw bikum rabbi lawla dua'ukum. He will not respond to you if there were no duas of yours. Okay? That's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now as we said last time, I and mean, I will briefly kind of point out to that and then I will you know uh, f move further to the second uh, phrase of the dua and that is see this calling whether that be dua whether that be you know uh, nida or whether that be najwa you know all of prayers salat all of this there are two 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 facets to it or two uh, how shall I say two parts to it one part is known as Part taqwini, which means that metaphysically, and the other, which is known as you know inwardly, inwardly, and the other is outwardly, which is tashri, if you want to say. Now taqwinan, which means metaphysically, everything is in the state of dua, and they cannot be otherwise. Everything, even kafir, even the trees. Even the heaven, the clouds, everything is in the state of dua. Everything is asking. Why do I say that? Because Quran says this. Because God is saying that. Yes, Allah ma fi samawati wal ma fi al-ard. Yes, Allah ma fi samawati wal ard. Yusabbihu lillahi ma fi samawati wal ard. Wa la tafqahuna tasbiha. You know, you will don't understand the tasbih. But everything is doing the tasbih, is seeking, is asking, is doing dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in terms of the outward or the in, in inward reality, is that the outward reality, whether than abd is doing tasbih or not, that is important with his ikhtiyar and with, it, with his will. Now the point of perfection is where this batin meets with the zahir. They meet together. That meeting point where a person is physically also doing the tasbih 
outwardly and inwardly as well they meet that is the true tasbih and he will be rewarded for that now after this the second phrase very quickly we have to go inshallah we try to you know finish this uh, to whatever level even in the month of ramadan if we continue the same topic you know we haven't lost it because Munajat al-Shabaniya is one of that Munajat where Imam Khomeini says that it could be recited in any month. Not necessarily that this Munajat is recited only in the month of Shaban. So we'll continue you know, in our program of perspectives to provide different perspectives of this Dua and to understand you know, from different perspectives what this Dua is really trying to teach us. After the wasma dua ida dauto, you have wasma nidai ida nadaitok, which means Khudaya, oh Allah, I am doing or I am giving this nida. Arabic is a very profound and very deep language. For every different, you know, halat state it has its own word a own very specific word and these words are related you know uh, to to some unique reality right unique reality for example you have a very beautiful phrase look at this in ziyarat aminullah where we seek from allah that allah provide us with the halat, with the state of mukhbitin, mukhbitin, you know, make us that, you know, from those who are mukhbitin, mukhbitin, who are mukhbitin? In Arabic, mukhbitin is a term that is used for a camel when there are certain worms that goes inside the ear of the camel and the camel comes and lies down on the ground and the camel doesn't move. If the camel moves, the bird who, have, who are sitting on the camel's head to take, get rid of these worms that are in the ears of the camel will fly away. He is spotless, he's restless. He is lying down on the ground without any movement because these worms are bothering him and the only way that God have designed that the bird should come and take this away from his ears. So he is in this state of restlessness and the birds come and sit and they you know, pluck these worms from his ears and his relief and release. So here the halat, when we ask from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the halat muhbiti, now tell me, can we give any explanation of this in English, of this state of muhbiti? <laughs> you know, Arabic is a very rich language. That's why the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose Arabic to send the Quran. It's not the question of taking sides. You know, the word of God can only be manifested in the full capacity in the language of Arabic, right? So God used this language to manifest His Word, to show His Word. See, everything must have that capability and capacity to can contain that thing, right? The container must be there to receive it in the maximum capacity. The bigger the container, the more it will receive, okay? Now, if the container is small, it is unable to receive the maximum capacity. So, Arabic ha is that big container which is capable of bringing the Word of God to its maximum capacity to bring the mercy of God through His Word to the maximum capacity to mankind. The same way, a human being, an insan, a human being and his heart and he himself 
should be on a maximum capacity to really manifest, to really show what God is, to really have that knowledge in him, to really manifest and teach who God is. Like I said, like I said, Tawheed is a journey. So the prophets, and among the prophets, our prophet, our last prophet, who is this month of Shaban is, Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is that insane kamil, is that perfect man who is able to manifest God, who is able to reflect God to that maximum capacity and because of that, prophet becomes uswatul hasana. He becomes the exemplar. لَقَدْ كَانَ فِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ you know, for certainly a Rasulullah, the messenger of God is the God, is the exemplar for you. Why? Because he is manifesting the full capacity of the color of God. Sibghat Allah min al Allahi sibqa. So Arabic is that language. It's not the question of a person, oh, because it's because Quran is revealed in Arabic because you know it came in the Middle East in the Arabs no it is not because there is a reason and as a matter of fact the there are many reasons you see the work of Allah is not from one angle brothers and sisters the way God works God works in the mysterious ways and uh, and his act have mysterious facets, have mysterious and many facets and reasons uh, within it. And the beauty is when one tries to understand that. Uh, and it's a lifetime journey to really understand that. One act of God have many meanings. And that's why when we look at the Ahlul Bayt even their actions and the way they do things have many meanings. Because Allah is Hakim, so His quality of sum and listening is also with Hikmat. His quality of giving is also with Hikmat. And it will have many reasons behind it. Arabic, well, that's one of the reasons. Number two, mercy. To show mercy to mankind at a given place where the Arabs were merciless. They were merciless. They were burying, burying their own daughters alive. How merciless a father could be where he buries his own daughter. What type of a father he is where he's burying her own daughter, not son. You know, daughter is a girl which points out to once again that mercy of God. Right? He's burying, burying his own mercy because daughters are known as mercy of God. He's burying his own mercy. He is becoming suicidal towards this symbolic reality of God which is mercy. How, how shrewd, how cruel, how hard-hearted this Arab is. Now a message of mercy must be given. Now humanity and insaniyat who is at its level of pitch darkness Perhaps the Romans who were living during that time, they were not as fallen in their humanity as the Arabs of, of that time were fallen. That's why the Quran was not revealed to, that were for the Romans, for instance. There was still some humanity left within them. But for the Arabs, there wasn't any. And if Quran was not sent at, to the Arabs of that time there, the same culture, the same darkness 
would have spread all across the globe, all across the world it would have spread. Maybe the Romans are not at that level of darkness, but they would have reached there eventually. It would have spread if it was not taken care of. So Islam and Quran and the Prophet was sent there in order that it creates ripples of mercy all across the world. It creates that ripples of light. It, that message goes all over the place. That's why Islam was sent there. And it happened to be in that Middle East and it happened to be that Arabic language. It happened to be through the Prophet who is Rahmatulil Alameen, who is the Khilqat Awali, who is that Noor, who is that light. It happened to be the middle of the whole globe and earth. For example, the Kaaba, for instance, the very first house of God, where Hazrat Adam alayhi So the act of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have many reasons and the point is that Abd must really understand and he is, when he understands it, his jaw will drop. He is in that state of astonishment. In the state of praising God, how beautiful the Lord is, how beautiful God is, if he understands that. So now, as we were explaining, the, the language of Arabic. Now, nida, wasma nida'i ida na daytok, is nida means a faryad. You know, in Farsi or Arabic, we say faryad. We call, you know, nida. Nudbe, you know, where a person restlessly calls loudly in group together, for example, even. For example, Nudbe is also sometimes used as a plural as well. So it begins with Dua, Wasma, Duai. You know, Dua is not Faryad. You know, Duya is not, not considered as Faryad, is considered as calling. But Nudba or Nida is where a person calls loudly, you know, that's nida. So, after dua, you have nida. Wasma nida'i ida nadaituk. Oh Allah, this is one of the halat of the nafs, the state of the nafs. Now see, like as we said, the munajat of Shabaniya points out to the state of the nafs of the slave, of us, and also it points out to the Kamalat of God. It has both elements within it. That's why this Munajat should be thoroughly. I recommend, I commend all of our lovers of Ahl Bayt that they thoroughly understand the Munajat Shabaniya. That they pay attention to this Munajat Shabaniya because this Munajat will bring about for us the understanding of our nafs, of our soul. And it will bring about the understanding of the Lord. And not only that, but it will bring about the way of connecting and communication of ours to God. This is what Munajat Shabaniya will do. And it is that important. And that is why we find that Imam Khomeini mentions that you recite any moment, not just in Shaban, the Munajat of Shabaniya. It's a complete methodology. It's a marifat of the nafs. One will have the ma'rifat in nafs, as we know that the ma'rifat of the nafs is the ma'rifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this is a unique gem and jewel that Amirul Mu'mineen have given us. And in this month of Shaban that we really have to recognize and utilize. So wasma nida ida na daytuk is the question that nida, oh Allah, I give you nida. You listen to my nida. Ya Musa in dhikri hasanun ala kulli hal. What does Musa say? Remembering me, calling me, right? In every state is husn, is very good. So Musa called me and Musa did call Allah in every state. In every state, you know, one should really call Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In every state one should call. Because when Musa asked him that, Oh Musa, you know, how shall I call you? Right? You know, how shall I call you? 
because sometimes I get this halat that I am in love and I am in love of communicating with you, I get this. But sometimes, you know, I am a bit tired. So God's reply to him, Oh Musa, Oh Musa, you know, I know, I understand you have different states and halat, but in every state call me, in every state remember me. You know, one should really, you know, uh, what you call, uh, come to a level where his daim was zikr, all the time he's remembering God. And he can, huh? And he can. Because that is the final stage. And insan have to reach that stage. When a soul is about to die, when a person is about to die, he is breathing his last breath in what state he is. He is feeble and he is weak. He is not eating and he is not drinking. In that state, what is he doing? He is remembering God. He is remembering God. He goes unconscious. When he comes back to conscious, there is nothing but only God for him. He is remembering no one but only God in that state. So that halat nafs must come on with man. Ya Isa alam anna sururi. You know, O Isa, my happiness and my joy is an tab sis is at a time when an tub an tubas bina tubas bisa ilayya is at a time when you manifest your humility to me. That's my pleasure. We have to manifest, we have to show ourselves, our humbleness, our humility, our lowliness, our limitation to our great Lord. It is not the question that he would like that. It is some sort of zalim, nauzubillah, a cruel king, who likes to be praised. No, it is not that. It is to bring our arrogance down because it is the arrogance, it is that ego which will destroy us because shaitan did that. So it is for our sake. It is not for God. God doesn't need any praises from the creation. In Surah Muttaqeen, Amirul Mu'mineen mentions, Mustaghni, God is, God is Ghani, from your praise, O oh, Hammam, He doesn't need the praise. But He still created the creation. So, O oh, Isa, Sururi, my joy and pleasure is when you show that humility, when you show that, you know, humbleness in yourself, right? The dua all du'as tend to point out to this great reality. Now here, uh, my joy is with you when you show, you know, your, your humility and you seek me, right? Isa, read to me or call me, he says in one, another hadith, Biharul Anwar, O Isa, call me. You know, the way how a person is drowning, how he calls to God, Call God in that fashion. Call God in that fashion. That you are drowning and this is it. It is the end of it. Connect to God this way. That's the way of seeking God. That's how ahl Bayt taught us and that's how they used to communicate with God. They would connect to God in that fashion. We have to bring about that state in us. We have to bring about that state in us. That's how one should really connect to God. That's how one should really connect to God. That halat should be that. Wasma duai ida dau tuk. Wasma nidai call restlessness li call ida na dai tuk. Wagbil wa akbil alaya ida na jai tuk. When I 
I'm in the state of Iqbal. Iqbal means being opposite to each other. Muqabil. Iqbal means that. So when I'm having this Qibal, when I'm opposite to each other, when we are opposite to each other, in Iqbal. You know, Iqbal have taken place. Alan idha na jaytuk. When that Iqbal take place, when I come closer to you, you know, idha na jaytuk. When I'm doing that najwa, you know, and I'm doing that najwa, that iqbal should take place. Wa iqbal ilayya idha na jaytuk. I think we have reached to the end of time. Uh, what we'll do is we'll try to look at uh, dua, nudba, and najwa, and we'll emphasize more on najwa in our next session. Now, I would like to leave here uh, tonight's program by giving you a practical way of helping us uh, when we are praying, when we are reciting these astaghfar, when we are trying to communicate with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through these duas, is that when we are praying, we should really have the element of different aspects of God from his side that he is merciful. And when I say, Subhana Rabbi al Azimi wa bihamdi, O Azim, O greatest Lord, you are merciful. I should be thinking at that same time. You know, or for example, Subhana Rabbi al Ala wa bihamdi, O Lord, you are the of forgiving. You know, please forgive me as well. You know, you're Azim, you're... So you have, should have this halat in your heart. Not, it should not be just the word. Even if you're saying Azim, you should really try to think that he is Azim. You know, this is very important. These halat that one should have. Halat of thankfulness. Wallah Azim, thankful or Azim. Thankful or ala, you know, fear. Allah, you can punish me. You can do whatever you want. My sins are so much. So dear brothers and sisters, try to do that and don't forget the munajat. I'm following the commentary of Ayatollah Tahriri, which is, who is one of my mentor uh, in these programs and will continue on the munajat of Shabani in our next program. And we'll try to finish this commentary in the month of Shaban and the month of uh, Ramadan. It will be a long series to follow us, but every program will can be watched independently. Uh, could have a introduction and a conclusion. As for tonight, for example, we had the introduction um, of du'a. What really du'a means is a calling, and what really sami means, and also nida. What it really means, and um, uh, also you know, for example, uh, iqbal and najwa. Inshallah. Uh, thank you very much for joining us and we'll see you next week again. Uh, goodbye from uh, Perspectives and Hidayat. Ghafar Allahu lana wa lakum wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.